In short, uh, it is no longer possible to believe either in a single global form of capitalism or of post-capitalism. However, shaping tomorrow's economy is perhaps the least important part of our future concerns. The crucial difference between economic systems lies not in their structure, in the degree to which they mix public and private, but in their social and moral priorities. And these should be the main subjects of our discussion. Let me suggest two crucial problems, perhaps three. The first is that the end of communism has meant the sudden end of the values, habits, and social practices by which generations had lived. Not only those habits and practices of communist regimes, but also those of the pre-communist past, which had been largely preserved in such regimes, more so than in the more dynamic capitalist countries of the West. We must recognize the sheer depth of the shock and the human calamities brought about by this abrupt and sudden uh, social earthquake. This sense of social disruption and disorientation remains, at least for all those except those born after 1989, and it remains even when economic hardship no longer dominates post-communist populations. And it must inevitably take various decades before post-communist societies find a stable way of living in the new era and some of the consequences of social disruption institutionalized corruption and crime may take even longer to eradicate. <coughs> the second crucial problem is that both Western neoliberalism and the post-communist policies it inspired deliberately subordinated welfare and social justice to the tyranny of the GDP economic growth, the gross domestic product. Maximum and deliberately inegalitarian economic growth. In doing so, both undermined and in former communist countries they destroyed the systems of social security and welfare, the values and aims of public service. This is no base either for the European capitalism with a human face such as it existed, say, after World War II, between World War II and the 1970s, or for the post-1945 decades, or for satisfactory mixed post-communist systems. The purpose of an economy is not profit, but the well-being of all people just as the legitimation of the state is not its power, but the people it serves. Economic growth is not an end, but a means to good, human, and just societies. It doesn't matter what we call regimes that pursue this aim. It does matter how and with what priorities we combine the public and private elements in our mixed economies. The most obvious system which confronts both the capitalist and the post potentially post-capitalist societies is clearly the one already underlined by President Gorbachev and no doubt other people, namely the problem of the global environment. And the important element about this problem is not that it is only that it is serious and that we are threatened with very considerable human catastrophe, but that its solution cannot in any sense be achieved by any return to a system primarily relying on the market. It has to be done 
by a deliberate choice of social priorities and in which, of course, public, uh, private sectors and the market will undoubtedly have to play its place. But a return to, as it were, a liberal or neoliberal way of solving the environmental crisis into which the world is now sinking is not possible. These will be, I think, the key political questions of the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you.